Hi friends, it's Trish. I'm back with another video and today I'm going to tell you about how I almost did not pass nursing school um, for something really dumb. I know it's not that dramatic. If you're new here, hi, I'm an ICU nurse and I post videos every Monday about nursing, health, and fitness. Um, so if you like what you see, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Without further ado, let's get started. A big reason about why I'm telling this story is because I think when we look at people's lives on Instagram or on social media, we tend to compare ourselves and go like, wow, that's so awesome. One, I want to know how they got there, but two, like they're just their life is so awesome. I think what we forget is that when we're looking on social media, that's just people's highlight reels. It's the stuff that they do want to show. It's the stuff that they have put together to, to connect and to show and to engage. Sometimes the things that they don't share are the things, the follies, the, the stuff that really got in their way. It's something that they're not as proud of. So this is one of my moments that I'm not super duper proud of. It was just kind of embarrassing in the moment because I had almost not graduated and almost lost a job from my employer who is my employer now. So that was kind of stressful. No one's perfect on social media. I guess this was senior year um, at UCLA in the nursing program. We go by quarters, so you would call it winter quarter. I had to take an ICU course and this course basically determined if I was gonna get an ICU placement in my clinical immersion, clinical preceptorship. Basically, when you're trying to get a job in the ICU, you need to have some sort of ICU volunteer experience or some sort of ICU experience in your school. For UCLA, we don't have an ICU clinical experience for everybody. If you wanted to do ICU as a new grad, then you had to go through your immersion and that was the only way. So I took the ICU class. It was really, really hard. I thought I was gonna fail. I actually needed to get an A in the class and I think I slid by with a B plus, which isn't that great. I it was still kind of in the air if I was going to get an ICU clinical immersion placement. For UCLA, before you enter into that spring semester where that's where your immersion is, um, you have to fill out a form and that's basically stating like what's your preference because they allow you to place yourself essentially. So what your preference is like if you want to do OB, ICU, um, med surge, OR, things like that. Now they couldn't guarantee any, everything like we actually didn't have an ER or an OB placement during my time. I selected that I wanted to be in a surgical ICU and that I wanted to be in a ho hospital that was really close by. You have to write like why you think that you should be getting this placement, things like that. So it was just like, oh my gosh, I really have wanted to be an ICU nurse for a while. Um, you guys know my story about how my grandpa was in the ICU. That was the whole reason why I wanted to do this and this was my only shot. Luckily, I got the placement for the surgical ICU that I wanted to be in. Now during winter quarter, I also had applied for culture night. Every year UCLA puts on a Filipino culture night to kind of showcase Filipino culture through dance, acting, singing, like a whole story. And normally when you're in culture night, you can just be part of a dance, like a traditional Filipino dance. You learn the dance and you're part of it. You do your dance for the one part of the show and then you show up for the finale and you're, but I decided to go and get casted in the show and audition because I felt like the story really res resonated with me. The first thing they asked me was, do you think that you can handle both culture night and being in your final immersion year? And I was like, yes, this is something that I've always wanted to do. I am going to do whatever it takes. I went on to spring quarter and I had to do 300 hours of immersion in the surgical ICU as well as go to practice weekly on Saturdays for the show with the whole cast and additional practice or just the cast itself, like the story, and then go to practices for my actual dance suite. It was super stressful, but I had a really fun time doing it and I think that's why I did it. For our culture night, we have to do a community performance um, and that's kind of like halfway between when the show is actually supposed to start to kind of gauge where we're at from start to finish of the actual show. And my director comes up to me and he goes, I know that you've been super busy. I was wondering if you could sit this one out. We'll have your understudy do this show and you can just do the big show with everybody. And 
at first I didn't really want to complain. I didn't really want to step in and say something. I was like, you know what? No, like I had worked really hard. I'm trying to balance clinicals and going to practice. I think that I am deserving to be in this spot at this time. It was a big pressure on me to prove myself and prove that I was ready when I couldn't show up to the practices all the time, when I wasn't always there and they were worried like, does she have this? And so I can understand why they were concerned. On the day of, you know, I had to make sure I know, knew all my lines. I think that I did pretty well and that was awesome and I was riding on that high of like, I had so much pressure bottled up and I needed to really fulfill this role. Wow, I did really awesome. I did really well. So much so that I forgot to do my weekly clinical summary for my professor. So every week we meet up once and every week we have to write in a clinical log. That's nothing new, that, that's something that I've had to do all throughout nursing school. I had just forgotten to turn it in by the time that it was due. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't do it. So I did it really quick. I sent it to my professor and I said, hey, I'm sorry. I was unable to send it in. I had this uh, cultural performance that I had to do and I was expecting her to give me a zero or, you know, mark me down but she told me that she had to write me up because in the real world, when you make mistakes, there are consequences. So she wrote me up and that basically goes on my record, like my school record. When you get three of those, then fail at class and you have to repeat it because of how the way my program is structured. It's not like I can just wait one quarter and take it. I would have to wait all the way till next spring quarter to take immersion with the BSN students before I could graduate. So that was strike one. Then there's strike two. When you're in clinical immersion, you follow the same schedule as your preceptor. So my preceptor was all days and I would just have to juggle between that and my practices. What I forgot to mention was that every week there's a group of us, we all meet up to kind of just discuss what are things that we're learning? What are things that we think are awesome about clinicals? What are things that challenged us? And what are some struggles that we faced? How is our preceptor? Things like that. What they recommend when that happens is that you don't go to clinical that day my first mistake because some people have it in other places like if your clinical is all the way in Long Beach and then you have to come back to UCLA to meet it can be really hard to get back in the traffic she just recommended that for a less stressful time that we should just not go to clinical on that day well me being the person that I am decided to go to clinical because my clinical was in the same building then i missed my weekly meetup because we were lining a patient and i thought that was the coolest thing ever because it's something that i'd never seen prior to this all my clinicals were in med search floors i had never seen a procedure being done at the bedside what lining a patient means is that we put a central line into their jugular well not we the doctor does it but they do everything at the bedside so the nurse's role is to make sure that the patient is stable, watching their vital signs, things like that. It's usually it'll take like an hour if we're lining the patient for multiple lines, like a, a dialysis line and like a line to place meds in. That could take a little bit longer. I was so immersed in this experience that I forgot that I had that weekly meetup. And I had all these text messages from my classmates and a call from my professor that was like, hey, where are you? We're in the meeting. Call me, are you okay? I'm so worried about you, things like that. And I was like, oh my God, I missed it again. She's gonna get so mad at me that I pulled out my phone and I told her that I wasn't feeling good and that she probably missed my email, which is a lie because I went to clinical with the intention of going to that weekly thing. She was like, well, you didn't, you didn't email me like 12 hours before, so I'm gonna have to write you up again. I think in hindsight, I should have just told her where I was. I'm not sure if it would have made a difference. I still feel like she would have wrote me up anyways, but I think that really worried me because now I had two strikes and I had to be on my best, best, best behavior. I literally only had three weeks of school to go and I had to be in my best behavior because I didn't want to strike out. 300 hours, clinical hours is a lot of hours, so I didn't want to have to repeat it. Also during this time, I was kind of certain that I had a job lined up. I had interviewed for the unit that I was doing my preceptorship in. I want to say that they really liked me. My preceptor told me that they really liked me. So I kind of knew that I was getting a job there. That made me even more stressed because I was thinking, what if 
they liked me and I got the job, but then I can't even pass nursing school. Are they gonna hold my position? Like, what am I gonna do? I cried like every day. I didn't think that I was gonna pass and that all my hard work would have gone down the drain. So the moral of the story is always set an alarm for anything that you need an alarm. Don't just put a reminder in your calendar. I guess if something is your passion, you have to find a way to make it work and there's always gonna be waves. So life happens. You gotta learn from it, move on, do things about it to get to where you want to be. Um, and sometimes you learn things the hard way. That was how I almost didn't pass nursing school. Literally, now I'm like, wow, I have my dream job, but I almost did not get it. I feel like sometimes the challenges you face are meant to make you more resilient. They're meant to mold you and teach you something that maybe you took for granted or maybe you didn't realize in the past. Life happens and you will eventually end up where you need to go. For all you babies who are aspiring to be ICU nurses, you got this. Just focus, manifest that goal because it'll happen. All right, that's all I got for today. See you in the next video. Bye.